would give a brief introduction on how I became a botanical perfumer and why I make botanical perfumes. 20 years ago, in the year 2000, um, I was given a birthday present. It's called The Complete Book of Herbs and Spices by Sarah Garland. And in the book was a very intriguing recipe, an aromatic recipe, not a culinary recipe. An aromatic recipe from 1560. It belonged to a French princess whose name is Isabelle de Valois. And she was fundamentally, like many princesses were in her day, a diplomatic peace offering to another country. So she married into the Spanish court and she had a tremendous amount of pressure on her young shoulders and a lot of trouble was taken to make her beautiful and to make the story of her courtship with the Spanish court romantic and successful and fertile and abundant and verdant and everything. And so I feel like this recipe reflects that. Um, at the time I was an art history graduate student and when I found this recipe, the historian in me, as well as the romantic in me, I suppose, just had to know what this smell from 1560 smelled like. And it was the first time I, I ever ordered any dry botanical herbal ingredients. And I remember the day the package came, it felt like Christmas opening it. And it was also full of so many things that I had, I had never, I never heard of before, much less smelled or seen. It was very exciting and really got me into my senses and out of my graduate school brain, I think, which is probably something I really needed at the time. Okay, so um, let's see. So I mixed up this recipe and it was completely intriguing and delicious and exciting and smelled like nothing I'd ever smelled before. It didn't smell like anything from my world or my time frame. It, it did in fact smell very old and unusual and earthy. And it just changed my entire life forever. I knew when I made that, that recipe that I wanted to do this forever. And I was voracious and I wanted to learn all I could learn about natural aromatics and plants and herbs. And I was so, I was so excited and intrigued that I, um, signed up to be an herbology student with Rosemary Gladstar and I studied perfumery with Mandy Aftel and I studied aromatherapy with Jeannie Rose. I eventually got a job managing a botanical um, and essential oils company in the Hollywood Hills which I had for seven years and I got the job so that I could learn all I could about essential oils, how to import them, where do they all come from, how to store them, how to use them, what to do with them, how to sell them. It taught me a lot. I was very lucky during the, this period of time because I formed a friendship and a mentorship with Suzanne Caddy. If you don't know Suzanne Caddy, she wrote a really important book called Hydrosols. Speaking of hydrosols, I also bought a still, which is right behind me. I'm not sure if you can see it. My copper still, the Alemicus Gagia. So I studied distillation. I also became a botanical volunteer at the Huntington Botanical Gardens in Pasadena. I worked in the, the aromatic and herbal patches there, and I got to know two wonderful head gardeners at the time who taught me many things about botanicals and gardening and aromatic ingredients. I learned how not to be afraid of bees I learned how to deadhead things and cut things back. And the gardeners were so kind after I did my watering and laboring in the garden, they let me take home um, the clippings from the aromatic plants, which of course went straight into my still, or they were dried and turned into aromatic this or that. So it was a very enjoyable and verdant time, and I learned a lot. I also learned the Latin names for plants as I weeded and watered the garden there, which is important if you make botanical perfume, because there are so many varieties of plants and herbs, and the common names and the folk names for plants are very confusing. So you have to stick with the Latin when you're making your formulations or following other people's recipes. So it was quite an education I had. I have a strong memory of 
the first time that I was in Paris, I was shopping in the Montmorchet department store, and suddenly I smelled this perfume that was made with essential oils. I think most of us know what a department store perfume counter generally smells like, and if you're anything like me, it's something to avoid because it gives you a headache. But this time, and possibly because I was in France, I knew I smelled essential oils and the person I was with thought I was crazy. But I insisted and I was like a bloodhound and I followed my nose through the department store to the perfume counter. And there was a woman working there um, who spoke English and I asked her, I do speak French, but not super well. I asked her, is there an essential oil based perfume here? Um, and that's a very old-fashioned way, that's, of course, that's the original way of making perfume, but it's not always done anymore, and especially not in a department store. And she was a little surprised, and she said, actually, yes, there is. Um, this was in 2006, and she pulled out a bottle of um, Songe by Annie Goutal, who at that time I don't think was as known in the U.S. as she is now, many years later. But um, I told her I could smell it through the whole store, and... Yeah, it was affirming for me too, and it was a nice moment. Um, I felt a little triumphant that I could trust my nose in that way. And, you know, I think it also emphasizes the, the memory scent connection because now, anytime I miss my favorite city in the world, I just have to smell a little bit of Songe and I'm back in Paris. Back to the original recipe about Isabelle de Valois. I think what that recipe taught me was the potential for botanical perfumes to take you out of your time and out of your world and to help you travel to a totally different place and time, country, lifestyle, everything. Um, I don't think you can at all say that about synthetic perfumes at all or synthetic ingredients which are made in a lab. And in fact, essential oils are very close to wine. Um, their terroir is very important. And like wine too, essential oils are artisanal products just unto themselves. They are grown by farmers in very different parts of the world, very specific parts of the world. Their altitude is important, the terroir is everything for certain chemical compositions that you want in perfumes. There are artisanal products made by very skilled people before they even reach a botanical perfumer's hands. I really appreciate that about the ingredients that I work with. And I also feel like essential oils are um, akin to spices. Spices are such romantic things and the spice trade evokes so much again in terms of time and place and fragrance and the boundless things that you can do with them. I look at essential oils in the same way. I think they're just maybe less commonly thought of in those terms. But to me, that's they're, they're very much like spices. And again, I, I, I feel like this all lends a certain level of humanity to making botanical perfumes that, again, you just don't find with synthetic scents that you can go buy at Walmart or Victoria's Secret. It's a very different creature. So for the past 20 years, I've also been developing my sense of smell. I've wanted to smell everything and did as much as I could in order to do so. And in so doing, this developed my sense of smell in my nose, almost like working a muscle. And as my sense of smell developed, so did my palate. And I think this is yet another thing you can say that synthetic scents just don't do for you. Botanical perfumes open up your senses and work with your senses, whereas synthetic scents tend to just mask other smells. And they don't they don't work with you, they don't do anything for you. Another another gift of botanical perfumes and wearing essential oils and essential oil body products is that they don't cover up your personal pheromones. They work with your chemistry. Synthetic scents, um, they're made to mask, you know, think of, think of synthetic cleaning products and think of room sprays and that sort of thing. Think of Febreze and all of that. They're made to mask other scents. 
So synthetic sense and the kind of chemistry involved in synthetic sense actually masks your pheromones. So I don't know, I think I'd rather work with my own natural chemistry. I think that moment in the department store in Paris, though, also speaks of what it's like to wear a botanical perfume for other people, as opposed to some of those more stinky chemical scents, which give a lot of us a headache. Um, I have people who approach me, and I've sold many perfumes this way. People will come up to me because I smell good in, a, in a, an approachable way, and in an unusual way. Sadly, it, it is a little unusual in this day and age, like I said, to wear botanical perfumes. Another more romantic reason um, that has always interested me about scent, natural scents, and the plant kingdom, and other aromatics that come from plants, resins, trees, is the ancient and very pervasive connection between plants and the sacred, or or the spirit world. Um, I, you can find it in almost every ancient culture. Um, ancient Egypt, for instance. Um, I'll talk about this in more detail when I cover the story of my perfume, Kaifi. But um, the ancient Egyptians, their lives were full of scent, and most of it was for sacred reasons. I think it's easy to see if you've ever smelled a beautiful rose or a jasmine perfume. I think it's easy to see how anyone would believe it does bring you a little closer to God, whatever God means for you. As a way to pray. Many different cultures and religions have used botanical aromatics as a way to pray, and I think my own early first exposure to this was going to Catholic church as a schoolgirl and smelling them light the censer with the frankincense in it. and. In retrospect, it's very, it's very much like any other ritual. Um, and the idea of that fragrant smoke drifting upward, like prayers and wishes and supplications, it's very timeless, and I think it's very um, boundless and covers many cultures. Um, I am particularly interested in the intersect between plants and the sacred. I've, I've written a paper that's published on my website. If you wanted to learn more about that, I've also created some more sacred um, aromatic scents. Um, they're anointing oils. Um, I think it's pretty incredible that I can take ingredients that were mentioned in the second century CE and create something with them in 2019. I think there's just so much humanity and history and culture and life in the raw ingredients that I use as opposed to the very sterile ingredients that are created in a lab somewhere. And it's just another reason that I love what I do.